What's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. For those of you who can stick it out and have longer than normal attention spans, I really appreciate that because I have a relatively new channel. And it's very important for me early on to let everybody know where I stand, what this channel is about and what I intend to do with this channel. My channel stands what I intend to do and what this channel is about. Overall, unapologetically, is about first and foremost, the betterment of African American descendants of slaves. First and foremost. There, are, there will be situations that arise that may involve other people, other races, that I, may, I will have a problem with. But first and foremost, this channel is for my people. And I want to make that clear because what I'm about to show you and who I'm about to show you and what, and you know, however it goes, it's the total opposite of someone, I believe in my opinion, who does not have that ability to have a, 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 a firm platform and strong enough to stand on what they say and what they believe the first time it comes out their mouth. So what comes out of my mouth on this channel is what I believe and what I stand on. Now, my friends and family and I today, we went to, you know, we had the outing. We had a good time. It was safe. There was no issues. I come home. I do what I normally do. I catch up on uh, what's going on in the world. I catch up global and local politics and I you know I just research and I look and see what's happening. I came across something today that really bothered me and touched me in a way that honestly with respect to you all pissed me off. And what that was is Senator Cory Booker refusing to meet with the honor, Honorable Minister, Louis Farrakhan, after he agreed to at a small enclosed location with a mixed race of people. But on CNN, when he was questioned by it, when he was questioned about it by a white woman, he had a total different out, uh, total different perspective on meeting with the Lewis, Mr. Louis Farrakhan. Now, the necessity and the chances of him meet with Mr. Farrakhan, Minister Farrakhan, are slim and it's not necessary. And many people, <clears throat> particularly black people, <clears throat> who run for office or does anything of political uh, esteem in this nation has to go through that test or if they support Mr. Louis Farrakhan, just like Tamika Mallory had to do on The View and in many other venues she went on to say, do you denounce what Mr. Farrakhan stands for? Do you denounce what, the, what he said? Do you denounce Farrakhan? Do you, would you meet with Farrakhan? That's the litmus test for black politicians and black activists in this nation. And so it has come to, for people to start to believe that, black people to believe that if I agree or if I don't agree, but I will meet and speak with him about his perspective on uh, society and politics, then that makes me a bad person. So what I would do, I would sit up here and say that I don't agree with Minister Farrakhan because that makes white people. They make Jewish people, they make other Orthodox Muslim people feel uncomfortable. 
Now, whether people or not feel uncomfortable about the situation in Black America, one thing cannot be one thing cannot be denied: that the Nation of Islam has been a pillar of the Black community for almost a century. That's a hundred years. Now, first you had Elijah Muhammad. Then you had Malcolm X, and then after the passing of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you had the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, and every, every day, every waking moment, every goal that the Nation of Islam has ever had in this nation was the betterment of black people. Now, if you get on the news media and they ask you, do you denounce what these people are saying, what they're asking you, do you want the betterment of black people as opposed to how, as opposed to making white people feel better, and what Cory Booker did, what I will show you in video, he said, "I will rather appease the emotions and feelings of white people and Jewish people over the necessity of black people in this nation to get our own selves together, to get our own selves right, to make ourselves as as members of this global community and, and have." A, a standard of what's the word I'm looking for as black people to have a standard of righteousness of value that's what they want to know do you value doing better and doing good things for black people than you do for the emotions of white people because let's not get this misunderstood they may say Jews, but today's Jews are white. The Jews in Israel are white today. So when they say do you when they say this anti-Semitic, this anti-Semitic, what that means, this is anti-white supremacy. Because everything the Jewish state is doing to the Palestinian people and the Gazan people is based on, on white supremacy. So when they ask any, any, they don't ask Donald Trump, would you meet with Louis Farrakhan? They don't ask him that. They say, would you meet with the leader of North Korea? And he said, yes, I would. Would you meet with the leader of Iran? Yes, I would. Would you meet with the communist country president of China? Yes, I would. And he got elected president. Rightfully so. Because as the president of a nation facing hardship, facing war, you should be able to meet with any and everybody you need to avoid such a catastrophe. So Donald Trump got elected saying he will meet with anybody. But when it comes to black people running for office, especially national office, such as the office of president, they want to make sure that you won't meet with anybody that displeases white people. And Cory Booker fell into the trap. Cory Booker is a coward because there's nothing worse being in a relationship because when you have a president of a country and you have the people that come, that's a relationship. I don't care how you look at it, that's a relationship. And and you can go the same way. If you're a man and you're a woman, you're a woman, you're a man, or whatever you are, when you're in a relationship with somebody, the worst thing to do in that relationship is be with somebody who does not stand firm on what they say and what they believe. And he fell into that trap like a coward that he is. Now they asked him, I'm going to show you in a video, he said he would meet with Minister Farrakhan. He didn't feel it was necessary to, but he would, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, just because he would meet with anybody. Then when he got in front of it on the teleprompter in front of this white woman on CNN, what, today or yesterday or a week ago? It's very recent, I promise you. When he got in front of that, and that white woman questioned him, he said, no, I will not meet with the minister. I will not support anybody like that. And then I'm going to give you the context. I'm going to also show you the video on why they, he said he wanted to be with Mr. Farrakhan. I'm playing it in its entirety because it's seven minutes long. That's it. Seven minutes of Minister Farrakhan on why they say he's anti-Semitic, why they say he's homophobic. But I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to tell you this, you know, the last time before I get into the whole spiel is that Cory Booker is not fit to be the president of the United States because he blows in the wind like a leaf. He has no strong stance. 
He only does what people he what he believes people will like of him. And there is nothing more weaker than a man who only does things to make people like him. Cory Booker is a coward. And I'm going to show you why he's a coward. So the first video I'm going to get into now, I'm going to share my screen with you all. It's Cory Booker agreeing to meet with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in a small setting of a mixed race of people to where he felt like he wouldn't be held accountable for it, where he felt like the video would not resurface of it. Then I'm going to get my perspective on that. Then after that, I'm going to show you the video of, of Cory Booker flip-flopping on what he said at that small meeting about how he would not meet with the Minister Farrakhan. I'm going to get my perspective on that. And then after I get my perspective on that, I'm going to show you the video of why Cory Booker, of Minister Louis Farrakhan, why he said he would not meet with the Minister, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So let's get into it. The first video is the one I told you about that we were going to show first. It's him agreeing to do it. I'm gonna make it full screen because uh, looking back at my videos, I noticed when I don't have a full screen, it's kind of confusing because you see YouTube on YouTube channel. So I'm gonna make it full screen. Give me a moment. All right. Now it should be full screen for you guys. So it's not confusing and you know optically like confusing. So I'm going to play it. Hopefully the audio is clear enough for you guys. But if it's not, like I said, after every, after every uh, video I show you guys, you will see. Oh, yeah. Uh, the question is hard to hear because even in my own personal space when I was listening to it, it's hard to hear. But his response to give you context on what was asked. Would you be willing to get an audience with him? I'm sorry, man. You know, I, I have met, I live in Newark, so we have famous mosques going from, I, we have Nation of Islam there. As mayor, I met with lots of folks. Uh, when I've heard Mr. Barricon's speeches uh, for a lot of my life, so I don't feel like I, I need to do that, but I'm not one of these people that says I wouldn't sit down with anybody and hear what they have to say. But, I live on a neighborhood where I, I, I'm getting uh, guys on the streets uh, uh, offering and selling uh, his works. So I'm very familiar with, with, with Minister Louis Farrakhan and his beliefs in his work. Yes. All right. That was the end of the video. And so I'm going to tell you, he said uh, he, li he lives and he's the uh, senator from Newark, New Jersey. And he's very familiar with the works of Louis Farrakhan. He often, he meets a lot of people and he often meets people who are a part of the nation. And he said he doesn't feel like And he said he doesn't feel uh, that it's necessary to meet necessarily with Louis Farrakhan, but if he had the reason to and the opportunity to, he wouldn't say no, which is understandable. Because if you're in a situation and, and something arises and you need to honestly, I'm going to tell you like this, Louis, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is pretty much a president of African-American descendants of slaves in this nation. I'm going to say it out there point blank. That pretty much is our president. And he has been for decades. So he said at first, yeah, I, I may not have to. It may not be a reason to meet him. But I'm willing to meet him in case I need to. And that's cool. I understand that. Now, we finna get in the situation that happened when this white woman on CNN asked him that very question about the comments he just made that I shared with you and how he flip-flopped and switched his stance. Now, women, you know that if you're with a man or you're in a relationship with a man and he's not firm on what he says and what he believes, 
You cannot respect him as a man. You can't. How can you? Because a man is supposed to be firm, he's supposed to be direct, and he's supposed to be honest about who he is, what he's about, and what he says. Same thing goes for a president of a damn country. So now we're finna get into the video. I'm finna show you the video of him on CNN. He's been, I, I believe her name is Dana White. That's the um, anchor who asks him his questions about what he said his stance was on the comments he just made. I'm gonna show my screen, which share my screen and put it in full screen with you guys. All right, here we go. I want to ask about something that you were recently asked, and that is about whether or not you would meet with Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. He's unabashedly anti Semitic. He said, quote, I don't. You said, well, I don't feel like I need to do that, but I'm not one of those people who says that I wouldn't sit down with anybody to hear what they have to say. Is that still where you are? Well, first of all, that that is completely taking out of context that larger conversation. Okay, give me the context. Uh, I, I, will not sit, I will not sit down with uh, Louis Farrakhan, period. Um, and I reject anybody who uh, preaches that kind of uh, bigotry and hate uh, towards other Americans. I'm going back to it because I want to point something out. I'm going back to it because I want to point something out. I want you to see the lead on question she gave him. First of all, she already labeled Louis Farrakhan anti-Semitic. She said he's unquestionably anti-Semitic. That's not how you ask a person a question, but already demonizing the person you're about to ask them a question about. That's number one. And then, so I'm, I'm gonna be pausing it and going back. Let me, let me do it, I'm gonna stop it. Watch. Listen to the first thing she says. The Council for Idea Complexity. I'm gonna turn that advertisement uh, value down. Um, that's the first thing she says is, he's undeniably anti-Semitic. And like I told you on my third, on my third video, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you why they saying that. They saying it, they've been saying it for decades, but in his most recent speech, I'm gonna show you what they're talking about. And I'm gonna break that down. So we're gonna wait till this advertisement is over. Okay. Okay. And that is about. Okay, here we go. I'm not gonna, I, I don't feel it's necessary to put this on full screen because it might mess up. I wanna ask about something that you were recently asked, and that is about whether or not you would meet with Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. He's unabashedly anti Semitic. See? Whether or not you will meet with the Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, who's unabashedly anti-Semitic. Of course, anybody answer to that question first 
would be, no, I would not meet with a person who's anti-Semitic. I won't meet with anybody who's anti-Black. But as a leader, as your job, as a prospective leader of a nation, you should be willing to meet with anybody that can help you solve the anti-Semitic problem, right? If this man is anti-Semitic, I should meet with him and try to convince him to be otherwise. When you, if someone hates a member of my family and they're willing to do harm to them, it would be better that I have an open dialogue and communication with them to convince them to do otherwise. So the question she first asked him, which, well, the question she asked him at the very beginning was a lead on question that was wrong and was disrespectful to the honor, Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And he went right along with it, so I'm going to play it again. Because this man is a coward. He said, well, I don't, you say, I want to ask about something that you were recently asked, and that is about whether or not you would meet with Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. He's unabashedly anti-Semitic. He said, quote, I don't, you said, quote, I don't feel like I need to do that, but I'm not one of those people who says that I wouldn't sit down with anybody to hear what they have to say. Okay. And that part, that part, that part. So she sat up here and said, you said you would meet with him and whatever she said, you know what I'm saying? You say you'll meet with him and all that. Donald Trump won the presidency of the United States telling people he would meet with the leader of North Korea who has genocidal and human rights violations. Farrakhan don't have that. He sat up here and said he will meet with the leader of North Korea who has a nuclear weapons program. Farrakhan doesn't have that. He sat up here and said he will meet with the leader of North Korea who has missile testing over Japan and over South Korea, where Farrakhan ain't got that. But when people sit up here and say that, I mean, Louis Farrakhan, based on what they think he said and how they want to manipulate what he said, they wrong? That's the problem with the Democrats in this nation. And that's why they it's going to be a very long time before they win another presidency. It's the fact that they have no backbone, they stand for nothing, and they want to wave in the wind about what they think other people would think about. How can you have a president like Donald Trump tell you before he's elected as president that he will meet with dictators and communists like China and still be elected? Because it's not about that. It's not about if Donald Trump would sit up here and meet with communists and dictators. It's about white supremacy. So when you have somebody who's black, because they never ask a white person if they want to sit up here and meet with Louis Farrakhan, they never have to ask that question. They never have to answer that question, I'm sorry. They never do, which they should. This man is pretty much the basic president of black America, of ADOS, of American descendants of slaves, and they should be meeting with him. For decades, this man been telling people the public and the government was necessary to get black people off the streets and doing crime and to make them whole and make them right. But they refuse to see that because it doesn't support the system of white supremacy. So Donald, Donald Trump can sit up here before he's elected and meet with all these dictators and communists and he gets elected. They ask black politicians who run for president if they meet with fair kind that determines on whether or not they should be elected or not. It makes no sense at all, except that that means in their mind that he won't support the system of white supremacy. Is that still where you are? Well, first of all, that that is completely taking out of context that larger conversation. Okay, give me uh, the I, I will not sit. I will not sit down. With you see how defensive she is. He said, well, basically that whole conversation was taken out of a larger conversation out of context. She was like, okay, well, give me the context. I'm like, okay, yeah, I will give you the context. I said what I said and I meant it. I will meet with anybody who's willing to do what's right for people in this nation. And nobody needs more help than black people in this nation. Whenever you look at the news and TV and everything, you see black people doing negative things, which is not true. All black people and the majority of black people are not doing negative things, but that stereotype, that stigma is still around and prevalent. 
So if you live in a nation that does not want to see a black politician or any politician sit up here and say that they do not want to meet with the leader of an of a organization that has always promoted the betterment of black people, not with just their words, but with their action and, their, and what they produce. The Nation of Islam has produced some of the greatest people this black, black people in this country have ever fucking seen. So if you're telling me that he should not meet with the person who wants the betterment of black people, who you say are, who white people sit up here and say black people are criminal, black people are always committing crime, black people are the most robbers, rapists, killers, murders, child molesters, all that. But this man has produced and this organization for decades and almost a century, like I repeated before, has always produced the most great people of this, of black society, and you don't want him to meet with them? That, mean, that tells me that you want the perpetuation of the problems that black America faces, and you want the continuation of white supremacy. The Louis Farrakhan period, um, and I reject any, it's completely taking out of context that larger conversation. Okay, give me the uh, I, I will not sit. I will not sit down with a Louis Farrakhan period, um, and I reject anybody who, uh, preaches that kind of uh, bigotry and hate uh, towards other Americans. Now, he sits up here and says, I would not tolerate any anybody who, who uh, says that type of bigotry towards other Americans, but God damn it, you sitting up here and supporting the bigotry of black people from everybody who you have to get your get your vote from. What are you talking about? You're sitting up here pandering to white America and the half of them have bigotry towards black America. I don't give a damn if they Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative. White supremacy is the order of the day. And if you're not man enough within yourself and say the, the justice for uh, the weakest, the most poor, the most impoverished, the most downtrodden, and the most victimized people of this nation need special attention, and you can't say that? What the hell are you trying to run for president for? You shouldn't even be a senator, let alone a governor or a mayor, if, if you wanted to step down to that level. What are you doing, bro? Cory Booker is the most highest form of a cow. Highest form. And he, will, he has no chance of winning anyway because most of the majority of, of Americans can see that. They can see that this man's a coward. He's weak. He has no firm ground to stand on. He has no strong belief that he's willing to stand back and lose the opportunity to be the Democratic nom nominee for. He has none of that. He has none of the qualities Donald Trump has. I don't care if you love Donald Trump or you hate Donald Trump. Donald Trump says what he says. He don't care who it offends. And he stands by that shit. That's why he was elected. Because the American people are tired of politicians sitting up here promising them this and then going to another form of other different people and promising, promising them the opposite of what they said before. Donald Trump is, a, is an honest man. He may not be the greatest person. He may not be the most liberal or non-racist person, but he, he stands by what he says. And that's why the Democrats are in the position that they're in. They'll never win again. Donald Trump has set the bar for the Republicans so high, Democrats are not even willing to try to challenge that. I promise you Donald Trump will be the president again. And he will be not only because of the stance he has and the politicians on the Democratic side who don't have a backbone or a spine to stand up for justice because there's nobody in this country who deserves more justice than the black people of this nation. And I'm not talking about the immigrant black people who sit up here and be able to, to be fruitful and multiply and have a good job. I'm talking about the descendants of slaves of this nation who have perpetually been unable to, to succeed in this nation out of racism and the history of racism and slavery and Jim Crow. So now I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you the final video that they were referring to when they, when, when, uh, I think her name is Dana Bash or something. You know, the video I just showed you when she asked uh, Cory Booker, are you still willing to say you will meet with Louis Farrakhan? Now, I heard a broadcaster, a fellow YouTuber, say that if you want to know what black people honestly think, 
sit them in front of a white person because they are lied to everybody else except white people. And Cory Booker just proved that. He sat up there in a small forum full of mixed race people, mainly people of color, and he felt it's safe to say he has no problem. He don't see it's necessary, but he has no problem with meeting with Louis Farrakhan. But then we get on national TV, on CNN, in front of this white woman, and she asks him, are you still wanting to meet with Louis Farrakhan before she, you know, right after she gave him a lead on question of saying he's unabashedly anti-Semitic. That's when the truth came out, and he said he wouldn't. Because Farrakhan's video is seven minutes long, and I'm going to play it in its entirety, because a lot of what the people of America get from what they hear of Louis Farrakhan is out of context and wholly incorrect. And one thing I'm tired of hearing is the term anti-Semitic and how defensive the entire nation can get. But when you see black people shot down in the street, in the face, grandmothers and grandfathers, nobody bats an eye, Nobody has that type of out, outcry. Nobody has that type of protest in a system to defend black people. But when somebody sits up here and says, you anti-Semitic, all, all the Jews, all they, they, they went through the Holocaust and, they, and 7 million Jews were killed in the Nazi Holocaust. That's bad. That's fucked up and it shouldn't have happened. But you talking about the people who went through slavery for 400 goddamn years who's still going through slavery, is still going through Jim Crow, who's still getting shot down the street, still can't get law, still can't get decent education, still can't get decent medical health care, and you want to sit up here and tell me about anti-Semiticism? Anti no, there's no people on the face of the earth who've been through what African Americans have been through. So I can give a damn about some anti-Semitic shit. Talk about my people. Talk about the most poorest people in this nation who've been here the longest. Nobody wants to talk about that because we want to throw that out the window. Cory Booker don't support reparations. He lost right there. He lost a black vote right there. But I don't want to hear no shit about no fucking anti-Semitic. You want to talk about 7 million people who died in the Holocaust? Let's talk about the tens of millions of black people who died since the slave trade. Let's talk about the hundreds of thousands of black people who died in a prison system, who died unjustly by the police in this nation, who were lynched, who were raped, who were hung, who were enslaved, all the babies they took from their mothers and their fathers and sold them off to somebody else. Now you want me to get mad about some Latinos who are in their fucking internment camp in the South of America? This is the American way, but I refuse to let anybody issue over top our issues and what needs to be solved in this country. Is this that they fear? I don't have no army. I just know the truth. And I'm here to separate the good Jews from the satanic Jews. Yes, yes, yes! This is just the beginning, banning me from a social platform. I use that platform with respect. I never allow those who follow me to become vile as those who speak evil of us. So I am dangerous, not to you, unless you feel that Father Flager's invitation to me may hurt Saint Sabina. 
We don't have the power to hurt the saints of mind. If you don't give them that power. I thank you for listening to me. I have not said one word of hate. I do not hate Jewish people. Not one that is with me has ever committed a crime against the Jewish people. Black people, white people, no matter which color it is. As long as you don't attack us, we ain't gonna bother you. So you met me tonight. Social media, you met me tonight. with the rules. Let the truth be taught. I believe because this is the only thing that will make America not great again. Make America truly great. If you allow me to tell the truth that God has revealed to his servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that he taught me, we can save America from her destructive fall. I'm not a misogynist. No, sir. I'm not homophobe. Don't be angry with me if I stand up on God's word. But I don't hate my brothers and sisters who have been exposed to the great deception. Taking the word God is love. I love my brother. <laughs> In fact, we kissed when I came up here. This is not queer. This is straight up love. So from tonight, Go home. I'm not going to ask you to let them put you in jail, what they call Facebook jail. We have a teaching about the maker of the white race. His followers were put in jail. I wonder if it's a Facebook jail. And everywhere they looked, it was another one. Till all the jails got filled up. And that's when the president said, I think I better go and start a dialogue with Farrakhan. Because this false mess to give you civil rights and take it back. You owe us. And I'm here by God's permission to tell all of you what justice looks like. It's not a white woman. A TV show in a nice car in a nice home. I got all of that too. 
entire speech that seven minutes that you heard the most profound thing the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan said is that he's here to separate the evil Jews from the real Jews and they call it anti-semitic now if it's anti-semitic to say that there are evil Jews out in this world it should be wrong to say that there are evil Christians. It's not wrong to say that there's evil Muslims and good Muslims. It's not wrong to say there are evil black people and good black people. It's not wrong to say there's evil white people and good white people. It's not, it's not hard to say there are rapists and drug dealer Hispanics like Trump said, and then there's good Hispanics, good Mexicans, as he said. The Jews are no different than anybody on the face of this goddamn earth. You deserve questioning, you deserve criticism, you deserve analyzation, like anybody on this goddamn earth. And when you sit up here and you want to tell me that Jews are unquestionable, they are unfathomable, they are unable, that you should not question the Jewish people and what they do, then that tells me that there's something wrong with your man and you have an agenda that you don't want to touch. There are evil and good people of all races and religions in this entire planet. Everybody who's doing wrong deserves criticism and correction. And because Farrakhan is able to sit out here and say that publicly in, in front of the entire world, and he's not running for office to appease people, that's wrong? No, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with the system. Because the things that the Jewish people in Israel are doing to the Palestinians and the people of Gaza is wrong. Open air prisons, no right to travel. They put halts on fucking mil on aid, on healthcare and, and, and first aid to their people when they bomb them. Come on, man. These are the people of God. They're the exact opposite. And that's what Farrakhan was talking about. Don't you see, you don't sit up here and see people doing morally wrong. And you still feel you have some, some need and some desire and some obligation to support them? I don't care who you are. You don't do that. That's stupid. Let me try to find something because I want something. I'm, I'm going to try to find something to go with what I'm talking about right now. Give me one moment. It, it won't take very long. Okay, I found it. Let me. Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm play this one. I'm I'm putting on full screen. I'm gonna put it on. Give me one second. Hold on, guys.
All right. So, like I was saying, before I put it on full screen, I want you to read the uh, title of the video. No, not that. Ah, brother. Give me one All right, so let me go back. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen before I put it on full screen. All right, so you can see this is ultra-Orthodox New York City Jews protest Israeli legislation. Now, the legislation that they're talking about, I'm going to show you the description of the video as well, from the Wall Street Journal, Journal I don't have to pretend to fake anything, is thousands of members of the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community Sunday flooded Lower Manhattan Foley Square to protest Israeli legislation that they believe were for students to be drafted into the military. So basically what Israel is doing is that they're forcing Jewish people to be in the Israeli military. And what the misleading headline of this is, is that they are against joining the military in an effort to continue to, to subjugate the Palestinian people because that's pretty much what the Israeli military is there to do. They don't want to be forced to join the military and kill and harm people against something that they don't believe is necessary. These are anti-Zionist Jews. A Zionist is a person who believes that Israel should be uh, bigger than what it was and it should go back to the, to the uh, Torah or whatever they call the Jewish Bible. Uh, how it, it covered a certain landmass and that part of that is Palestine where the Muslim people are and what they're encroaching on their territory and they the Jews were not there in large numbers to do that before World War II but after World War II and they need to find a homeland then they went themselves into Palestine and then from that point since the 40s starts expanding and expanding and expanding and, and pushing these Palestinian Muslim people out taking over their land killing them, stopping them from getting medical aid, stopping them from getting any type of help and resources in basically an open air prison. And now you have thousands of Jewish people who are Israeli protesting this type of action by their own Zionist Jewish government. Now, now, now I'm making it full screen. I want you to remember that Louis Farrakhan said, I'm here to separate the good Jews from the evil Jews. Thank you. 
As you saw, thousands of Jewish people in New York City protesting the legislation of Israel, forcing their youth to join the military to back an offensive against defenseless people who are the Muslim Palestinians in their nation. Now, when Farrakhan sits up here and says, I support good, I separate the good Jews from the evil satanic Jews, that's what he's talking about. The Jewish people are even standing up against that type of action. So don't sit up here and say Louis Farrakhan is anti-Semitic. Are you going to call these Jews who are protesting that type of action anti-Semitic and they're Jews? That's what I'm talking about. This is all hypocrisy and lies. And so the fact that Cory Booker is running for president and he ain't got the backbone and he can't honestly say and support righteousness, he ain't going to never be president. Anybody who sits up here and blindly supports anybody, you don't blindly support anybody or organization. And expect you're gonna do some type of good for millions of people. You're a loser, you're a coward, and you're weak, Corey Booker. I had to take so much time out of my day to break it down for many of you out there, and that's not I'm I'm not it's not a problem for me. But the fact that he gosh. Cory Booker, you might as well stop running for president. You might as well stop taking these uh, donors' money because you won't win. No Democrat will win because all the Democrats are weak. They flip-flop, and they do not support the, the people of America. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about the people over there in Israel. Israel is not the 52nd nation of America. Puerto Rico is... is the 51st, we're not talking about Israel, the 57th nation. We're talking about an independent nation that has their own issues that they should be able to solve themselves. But when they sit up here and tell American people who has to deal with American issues, who loses American lives, that you should disregard that and focus on what's happening in Israel and what people think and say about Jewish people, that's an issue. Especially as an African-American descendant of slaves whose people have been forgotten, thrown away, raped, murdered, almost destroyed psychologically. It's just done away with. I don't have the luxury to give a damn about the Jewish people in Israel. Because you tell me when the Jewish people of Israel have the time to give a damn about the American descendants of slaves of America. They don't. Now you tell me when the white people responsible for our situation, have more time to deal with black issues than they do about Jewish issues in an entirely different nation, then maybe this conversation will be different, but it's not. So that's what my channel is about. I will not wait for I will not falter, I will not change, I will not flip-flop, and I will not do anything contrary to my interest is the betterment of American descendants of slaves of this nation. I will die on that. 
So those of you who have subscribed, who want to unsubscribe, it doesn't make a difference to me. Those of you who have not subscribed and who agree with this message, go ahead and subscribe. But I'm not here to make people happy. I'm not here to make things palatable for people. I'm not here to be a representative of MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, CSNBC, ABC, CBS, or any of them eight alphabet people. I'm here for justice and righteousness for all people. And my whole focus is American descendants of slaves. If there's a news story or issue or something that comes to mind that affects other races of people, I will not hesitate to cover that because justice is justice, injustice is injustice, and my whole thing is to cover justice. But the whole reason I'm here is to inform to educate, empower, and to give commentary to the issues of American descendants of slaves. Anybody who has a problem with that and have an issue with that, then you take it up with yourself. That's not my problem. My problem is the solving of the American descendants of slaves problem. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, all of everybody who stuck around to hear what I had to say. You all be safe out there, you stay informed, you stay enlightened, and you stay aware.